Vectors for physics, lecture number four. Problem. We have two force vectors acting on an object. I should have an in there, shouldn't I? An on an object, and we wish to determine the resultant force. We do this by adding the two vectors. The capital letter N period stands for Newtons of force. So we've got this box here, and here's the center of gravity, and here's a horizontal line. Uh, and uh, this is one vector and has 27 newtons of force, represents a length of 27 newtons of force in the direction of 37 degrees. That's counterclockwise from this um, horizontal dotted line. And then I have another vector that's 18 newtons of force. It's a shorter vector. And it, it's acting 110 degrees from uh, counterclockwise from this horizontal uh, line and these two uh, vectors are uh, operating on this this object, and there's going to be a resultant vector. In other words, what's the uh, the sum of these forces? Geometrically, it would look like the red vector below. In other words, if I took the short vector and put it on top of the red, uh, other longer vector, and connected the only available tail with the only available head, I'd get the sum of these two vectors, and this is what the resultant force is going to look like. We use this uh, technique in the first lecture, if you remember. So step one is we change these vectors into component form, x and y form, on the Cartesian coordinate system. And we do that, as we remember, by multiplying the length of the vector. This is the long vector first, which is 27 newtons long, times the cosine of the angle. That's the x value. And comma, 27 times the sine of the uh, angle gives us the y value, and here it is in, um, this is where if you had the tail of that vector at the origin, this is where the head of the vector would be in terms of x, y coordinates. We do the same thing with a short vector, uh, the length uh, times the ang cosine of the angle, that's the x value, comma, the length times the sine of the angle gives us the y value, and there it is in x and y coordinates. Now the reason we do that, as you remember, is because it's easy to add them, we just add them up. And uh, we add the uh, x's and y's. I mean, here are the x's added up, and here are the y values added up. We're adding this to this. That gives us the x coordinate of the uh, resultant vector. And the uh, y coordinate, if we add the two y values up, we'll get the y coordinate of the resultant vector. So we end up with this vector of uh, 15.4 and 33.16. Uh, and this means that our resultant vector delivers about 15 newtons of force in the x direction, in this direction here, and about 33 newtons of force in the y direction. That's up this way. Step three, we want to change the resultant vector, which is in component form, to polar form, because that's a little more practical. We'll know how many newtons of force are acting total on this object and in what direction. So we find the length of the vector by uh, taking the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared, and we end up with 36.56. So that red vector is, uh, delivers 36.56 newtons of force. And we know that the tangent, I probably should make that a little bigger. Let's do that. Um, the tangent of uh, the angle is going to be um, y over x, Okay, the tangent of the angle of the resultant, which means that our theta reference, the angle, the reference angle for that is going to be the tangent inverse in our calculator of the absolute value of y over x, which is 65.1. Since our vector is clearly in the first quadrant, both x and y values are positive, it no, could be no other place, then our theta is 65.1 uh, degrees. Our final answer to two significant figures is uh, 37 newtons, comma, 65 degrees. Thus, the resultant force acting on the object, and here it is, this is the resultant vector here, this red vector, is 37 newtons in the direction of 65 degrees from the horizontal dotted line.